Hey, thank you very much. Uh, one warning up front, I do have three small children in the house with me, um, so we may get some exciting interruptions. Uh, just be forewarned, if you hear screaming, it's probably all okay. Um, as was in the introduction, my name is Tyler Smith. I'm a research scientist for Adventium Labs. We are a R&D company based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And just because it's been a long day uh, with a lot of presentations that have been really interesting, but you've all been listening for quite a while, I wanted to start with a joke. Um, I can't hear you laugh, but I'm gonna have to assume that you're laughing. I wanted to think of a data model joke. This one might be tangential. But uh, so helium, neon, and argon walk into a bar, and the bartender says, hey, we don't allow your kind here. They don't react. All right, onward with the presentation. This presentation is about using several different standards all together, that is FACE and AADL, as well as SysML, and a tool developed by Adventium Labs called Sliced. I'm gonna tell you two significant takeaways right now, then I'm gonna go through my presentation, and then I will tell you those takeaways again. The takeaway number one is that there is no one standard to do everything, and if you are setting up a modeling environment for your company, for your program office, for a platform, you need to consider how your modeling environment is going to work with multiple standards and how they work together. We saw many of those standards mentioned in the Tucson Embedded Systems presentation earlier and in the scale presentation. So takeaway number one is be ready to work with multiple standards. Takeaway number two is that you need to think about behavioral interoperability. Behavioral interoperability is the focus of the sliced tool and importantly, is not a significant focus of the FACE standard. And I'll talk about that more as we go on. This presentation is focused on using multiple standards together along with using Adventium's sliced behavior analysis tool to increase confidence in model integration. What I mean by that in particular is we want to increase confidence in behavioral integration of multiple UOPs by using SLICED, which is a behavioral analysis tool, to detect behavior integration errors. To do that, we have quite a few different things we need to address. Some of them have already been covered extensively and uh, pretty clearly and succinctly by prior presenters, so I'm gonna go through them quickly, such as the overview of the face standard and face data modeling. Other elements are a little bit newer and I'll spend more time on them, such as the SysML modeling process with face and AADL. As I mentioned, we're talking about several different standards today. I'll touch on them each briefly. First is the face standard for the face data architecture which captures semantic and syntactic information related to software data exchanges. This is what uh, Chris Allport talked about in detail when he described the data modeling architecture and data modeling process with FACE. We're also talking about the Architecture Analysis and Design Language, or AADL, which is a language focused on describing embedded systems or cyber physical systems specifically focused on embedded software systems. Next we have SLICED, which is Adventium's behavior analysis tool that analyzes face data models that are annotated with AADL details, such as thread properties, and SLICED analyzes them for behavioral integration errors. There are different tool environments in which you can do FACE and AADL modeling. Some of those were mentioned in prior presentations. In particular, for this presentation, we are discussing SysML. SysML is one, not the only one, but it is one of the ways to do FACE data modeling and is one of the ways to do AADL modeling. I'm going to show you how we do both of those together. In particular, for this discussion, we used MagicDraw SysML. There are multiple SysML tools. We are showing you one of them. Again, going back to my introductory statements, 
if you are setting up a modeling environment, you need to consider different standards and different tools that implement those standards and how those standards will work together in the context of your tools. Okay, this, pres or this slide shows an overview of FACE. I'm not gonna talk about this very much because it's been thoroughly covered by the prior presenters. Similarly, Chris Allport covered the FACE data modeling process in detail, so I'm not gonna add more time on that. However, I will talk a little bit about this last detail of the FACE data modeling process, which instead of focusing on the uh, conceptual, logical, and platform levels, the next step in the face data modeling process is defining the UOP model. The UOP model describes a single software unit of portability that references the data model defined earlier. I see a comment that someone cannot see the slide. Um, can I get confirmation from anyone that others are able to see the slides, either via chat or voice? Copy that. Uh, Emmanuel, um, you may want to try switching from the desktop app to the web app or vice versa. I had issues earlier today uh, where the web version of WebEx was not working and I had to switch to the desktop app. Unfortunately, I don't have any other ways to help you right now, um, but I believe these slides will be available online and I know that our paper that goes with these slides will be available online following this presentation. Continuing on, as you're defining a uh, UOP um, supplied model or USM, you provide some additional information about the software threads that make use of your data model. And you also define endpoints that have uh, message connections coming into and out of your unit of portability. As again was described earlier, you can use then templates and queries, which are part of the FACE standard, to describe the contents of those messages. When we have this level of detail describing a single software component and its messages it sends and receives, that gives us the ability to connect, show some parallels between the FACE standard and the AADL standard. And doing that can allow us to put additional information into our model that allows us to do more analysis. I apologize to anyone whose uh, screen rendering doesn't show this in sufficient detail. What we're looking at here is a screenshot from SysML, which shows the BALSA example which we've seen discussed in several other presentations today. The BALSA example is a simple system that is con uh, composed of, I believe, five face units of portability. And here we see several of those specified here. I wanna call your attention specifically to the ATC manager in the upper right-hand corner. And I want you to take note that we have applied multiple stereotypes to this entity. In particular, we have used a face unit of portability stereotype and an AADL thread group stereotype. In doing so, we have uh, defined a entity that is both a unit of portability in the face context and an AADL thread group in the AADL context. So we can do our analysis both on sliced side for, uh, excuse me, both on the face side for face conformance testing and on the AADL side if we want to do behavior or performance testing on the same model entity. That's a really important point, so I'm going to let that sit for a second. So one more time, what we've done here, we have a single element in our SysML model, and we applied stereotypes from two different languages. And in doing so, it allows us to have a single model that we can analyze using tools built for either language. Going back to our initial starting point or our takeaways, if you are designing 
or coming up with a workflow for modeling, this is the kind of question you should think about. Do you want to have individual entities stereotyped from different standards? Do you want to have translators between standards? There's no single answer. We're demonstrating one answer, and this is something that's important to think about early in your modeling process. This is, again, just reiterating the application of AADL and face stereotypes, again, to the BALSA model. Here, we're showing data flows between ports. Recall that part of the UOP specification in the face data standard in the UOP supplied model includes specification of ports. We can use those ports and optionally the face integration model that was added in face 3.0 to show connections between UOPs, this is where sliced comes into play. Again, recall that the FACE standard does not give much information about behavior of UOPs. However, the AADL standard allows you to provide fairly detailed state machines describing the behavior of a software component. The sliced analysis tool uses the composition of all of your unit supportability together with their behavior specifications to analyze the composed system behavior. We'll see an example of that in just a moment. I kind of stole my own thunder on the next slide, um, but I'll say it again because it's a key takeaway here. So. Sliced lets you perform virtual integration of your unit supportability by combining them together in one model where you connect their messaging inputs and outputs and then analyze their behaviors together. We accomplish that by using both the FACE standard and the AADL standard together. We demonstrated this in MagicDraw SysML using the FACE and AADL stereotypes. I apologize again if the details of this are difficult to see, but what we're looking at here is a SysML state diagram. For those of you who are familiar with BALSA, you may recognize these UOPs that are called out at the top of the screen, and you'll note we have several states called out for each UOP. In particular, starting from the upper left-hand corner, we have the Air Traffic Controller Manager, which has several states. It can be in a done state, a wait for configuration state, or a wait for EGI state. This is a slight variation on the typical use of a SysML state diagram. However, what it lets us do is it lets us render a counterexample to a correctness assertion about a system for the user to see. I'm going to jump back a couple slides to get to our reference problem. Excuse me. So to arrive at that sequence diagram, we start with this model of our composed system of units of portability. For each unit of portability, again, unit of portability being the face concept, we add a state diagram that uses concepts from the AADL. Then we use SLICED, which is Adventium's behavior analysis tool, to analyze the combined behavior of all of these UOPs, we analyze that combined behavior for heuristic-based conditions such as deadlock or live lock. That's a key point, so I'm just going to say it again. Sliced analyzes the composed behavior of multiple UOPs for problem conditions. Example problem conditions include deadlock and live lock, both of which are states of either a UOP getting stuck, where it can't move at all, it's stuck in a state, 
or a UOP that is spinning constantly and unable to make progress. It's not technically stuck, but it is spinning. We can also use this kind of behavior analysis to evaluate timing conditions, such as a latency condition that must be satisfied by a system. So with that in mind, we'll look back at this picture. When sliced runs on a system composed of multiple UOPs, it analyzes that system for potential error conditions if it finds a path of execution of the system for which an error condition is reached, Sliced generates a counterexample, and then it renders that counterexample as a SysML sequence diagram. What we are seeing here is a auto-generated SysML sequence diagram showing, as it says at the very top of the screen, an assertion that the air traffic controller manager always reaches its final state has failed. What that means is there is at least one path of execution in this system for which the air traffic controller manager does not reach a final state. I've highlighted in boxes one and two the conditions that lead to this state. In particular, what we see is the air traffic controller thread is not running or has not run in time. And so the air traffic controller manager thread, as shown in box two, is stuck in the waiting state. It is deadlocked, waiting for input that it never receives. The critical point here is we are analyzing all possible behaviors as specified in your model. This is not a simulation. This is analysis of all possible behaviors as specified in your model. The following workflows describe different ways you can apply the sliced and face modeling profiles in SysML. For the sake of time, since I see we have three minutes left and we've generally been relieving, uh, we've been leaving two minutes for questions, I'm gonna blow through these fairly quickly. The main point is that if you have existing models, you can import them into your modeling environment, or you can start from models that exist in one environment and add profiles on top of them. And finally, you can combine or translate models between representations. The details of these are available in our paper. However, for the sake of time, I'm gonna wrap up now and bring you all the way back to the introductory takeaway comments that I started with, which was number one, think about all of the standards that need to be considered in your modeling environment. It's not sufficient to just think about face or just think about host. You need to think about the interactions between those standards, how they overlap, how they relate, and your plan for translating, adapting, or sharing between them. Number two, that the face standard provides a data model interoperability framework but it does not provide extensive information about behavior of software. That is to say, there are integration errors that can arise that are unrelated to the face data model compatibility, but can still cause significant problems when you try to integrate UOPs. Sliced is a behavior analysis tool that aims to discover those problems as early as possible in the modeling and design process. Thank you very much, and now we'll be open for questions. Thanks, Tyler. We do have one question, which I think you probably can see um, from Sarah. You are saying state diagram, but showing an interaction in parentheses sequence diagram. Do you mean state or interaction? Yes, sorry about that, Sarah. Um, we specify the input to the sliced behavior analysis via SysML state diagram. Sliced generates a SysML sequence diagram or interaction diagram. In this slide deck, I did not include the specification of the state diagram. We actually have four different state diagrams, one for each UOP. I am happy to share those or discuss those offline. 
uh, but I did not include screenshots of those in this talk. Okay, she said, thank you for the clarification. One other question, <clears throat> does SLICE provide a qualified code generation from behavioral models? SLICE does not. One of the design decisions that we made in developing SLICE was that we wanted to use state machines at a level of fidelity consistent with the level of fidelity of the FACE USM. FACE does not uh, require vendors to provide details on the internal implementation of their unit supportability. And SLICE takes a similar approach. We do not require those type of internal details. And as such, SLICE does not have enough information in its models to generate code. SLICE is about analyzing your design at the level of the UOP interface such that you have a state model you could share with a vendor or with an integrator without revealing proprietary design information. Okay, 